Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us to discuss proposals for the redevelopment of the uh, former Electrobase site in Crayford. My name is Joanna Christofides and I work for a company called Chess Engage and we're supporting Pure Lake New Homes and Skill Crown, the clients and the wider team with the community engagement. I'll um, quickly run through um, the platform we are using for today's exhibition. Uh, so that you can uh, benefit uh, as much as possible. So at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a small icon with arrows and you can press this to expand the screen uh, just here. Um, and then slightly further up on the right hand side, there's a speech bubble with a question mark inside. Please use this to type in your questions, which we will uh, address at the end of the presentation if we have any. Um, and then finally, just uh, below that, there's a small document icon which you can press to download a copy of the presentation. Um, this evening's presentation and the materials will be uploaded onto the project website and we'll circulate a link for that over the next couple of days. So you'll have uh, an opportunity to see the materials at your leisure. So in this um, evening's presentation, we'll run through the proposals, uh, which will then be followed by a QA. and a um, So please do write in your questions in, into that box and we'll get through as many of them as we can this evening. Um, there will also be a feedback form at the end of the session, which we'll be very grateful if you could complete. And again, a copy of this will be available on the project website and we can send through a paper coffee, copy if you prefer. There are a number of people associated uh, with the project of this size, of course, and um, these are some of the uh, people here this evening. Uh, the principal speakers will be Mark Gibney from Planners Averson Young and Paul Gendel from uh, Alan Camp Architects and I will now hand you over to Mark. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just do a brief overview before handing over to Paul to explain the scheme. Um, the, the applicant is a joint, vent, joint venture between Pure Lake New Homes and Skill Crown. Uh, between them they have over 50 years experience developing mainly in South East London um, including Bexley, and you'll see on the slide there some of the schemes that they've been bringing forward. Um, residents will know some of the background to this site. Um, there was a previous planning permission that was resolved to be granted planning permission in 2016. Uh, this was for 359 homes, uh, five, six storey development. Um, and as part of the proposals, um, there was the uh, provision of a new Riverside Walk and a proposal to give the Crayford Rough over to um, the council to run and manage uh, to enable public access. Uh, there was at the time zero affordable housing. Um, the scheme didn't proceed at the time and that was because um, the access to the site was tied up with proposals uh, from Sainsbury's to redevelop part of the land adjacent for a petrol filling station. Um, those works uh, never happened and were never pursued, pursued. but since then uh, Sainsbury's have sold that parcel of land to, uh, to our clients and uh, we're now seeking to bring forward a revised scheme uh, which in involves uh, more land uh, and a, an uplift in housing to 570 units. Um, I'll then now hand over to Paul Gendel, who can talk you through the scheme. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully um, this site is relatively familiar to um, local residents. The uh, key features is the Crayford Rough, which is to the um, west of the site, uh, the left of the slide, uh, the, the aerial photo. We've got the dog track to the south. We've got Sainsbury's also to the south, which is marked at eight. And then running through the site, just to the north of the site, is the River Cray, which um, are some of the major features on the site. At the moment, though, the Crayford Rough is fairly inaccessible, and we believe this is one of the opportunities presented by this scheme, is improving and enhancing that situation. Next slide, please. So this slide shows the basic overall concept for the uh, scheme and key things to note is that there is a single point of entry into the site of Stadium Way to the south. Stadium Way is owned, owned by Sainsbury's so we are limited to just that entry point into the site for vehicles. Um, we cannot come in from the right of the site as you're looking at it, the east, the east of the site because that's a TFL 
red route. So there's no vehicular access permit permissible from that side. There is an existing bridge that leads into the site, which comes in from Maxim Road to the north. Um, however, it's quite narrow and um, that the intention for that is that it's solely going to be emergency vehicle access um, and pedest otherwise predominantly pedestrianised. So effectively all vehicles come into the site from the south, from Stadium Way. <clears throat> As part of the scheme, um, we're looking to create two new east-west routes. The northmost one of these, which is shown by the orange arrow, um, that's pedestrianised and for cycle routes only. And that's basically what we're calling the Cray, Cray River Walk. And it's opening up the River Cray for the first time in a long time to full access all the way through to Crayford Rough. And it will be a, a fantastic feature for local residents and the residents of this new block alike. The other main east-west route, which is indicated by the red arrow, um, is the vehicular and um, there'll be pavements along the side this for the routes to the primary front doors of each of the blocks. And that's a more urban kind of character, unlike the pedestrianised, soft landscaped east-west route alongside the River Cray. Also included within the site are a variety of north-south routes. Um, over on the right-hand side of the slide, as you're looking at it, we've put in a fully pedestrianised link leading from the original bridge at Maxim um, Close down to Stadium Way, and that'll provide a, a, a perfect sort of shortcut for people coming from um, Sainsbury's up to the, uh, the further to the north of, uh, of uh, Crayford um, and or to the bus stop. There are bus stops obviously are all around Roman Way and the idea is that this is a fully pedestrianised link that is not currently enjoyed um, and it provides an alternative route to having to walk along Roman Way which ultimately is quite congested as, as I'm sure everybody knows. Um, we've also created um, another north-south link in line with the vehicle entrance which is being highlighted here um, that is deliberately in alignment, so as you drive into the site you see that connection and that in turn would provide a secondary route up to the, um, up to the, the river walk. And there are a further two um, north-south links, uh, one of which is predominantly vehicular, although it terminates in the green space, and the one to the, um, to the extreme left as we're looking at it, that is pedestrianised and it's through a green space. Um, so in terms of uh, the parking strategy, the, the red dashed arrows indicate where we've moved the car parking below buildings or below podium slabs. So that's a landscaped garden that's built on top of the car parking. So if you were within the space, you wouldn't perceive the, the car parking. It's all hidden away and the landscaping appears, appears to wrap up over and or, um, between the buildings. So you see it as a landscaped zone. Um, next slide, please. This slide um, picks up one of the key um, constraints, I suppose you would say about this um, site, but it's actually something that, that can easily be solved. So the site is in the flood zone, but we've been doing extensive negotiations with um, the Environment Agency as to how to make it a safe space for the res future residents, but also not impact on the surrounding properties. Um, and the summary of how you, how you achieve this is that you basically don't put any sleeping accommodation at ground floor level. So you design maisonettes. So the living space is at the ground floor level. It's positioned 300 millimeters above the likely flood water top level. And so it's, you know, effectively it's always out of the flood zone and ultimately it's designing for a one in a hundred year flood event anyway. So it's extremely unlikely to happen. Um, there's also a safe means of escape provided for from all of the dwellings to higher ground and also included within the site is sustainable urban drainage system. So we're actually not worsening the impact on the, um, the existing infrastructure and the existing drainage, drainage systems as a result of this uh, development, proposed development. Could I have the next slide, please? This shows the overall master plan. Um, and as you can see within this, this, this is the developed part of the site. Um, the, the current um, footprint of, of non-developed footprint exceeds 50% um, and of which 50% is actually soft landscape and or hard landscape. So, you know, it's actually, if you include the road, it's an even higher figure, but, you know, the, the true figure of uh, hard and soft landscaping exceeds 50%. Could I have the next slide, please? And this in detail shows the landscaping scheme proposed for the various parts of the building. So. 
Um, the north-south link that I referred to before, leading from point A, which is at the Maxim Road Bridge down to point D, as shown on this plan, that is fully pedestrianised um, all the way up. And in the middle of the block is some surface level car parking, but that's softened and landscaped. And then at position C uh, is, a, is the other uh, north-south route leading up to the river walkway. Integral to all of these spaces is play space which is to suit um, zero to 11 year old um, residents, future residents, uh, but is, is fully, fully publicly accessible. So anybody can come into the site and use these facilities. There's no barriers, there's no gates, there's no, nothing stopping people being able to use the play space that's integrated within the scheme. Um, and uh, you, for instance, you can see immediately south of um, position A, that is an area of play that's being provided um, within that, yes, exactly that, that point there, within that north-south link. Um, next slide, please. Uh, sorry, and also, so I should have said on the, could we just go back to the previous one? Yeah, there's also a play incorporated to the south of the building, just adjacent to Stadium Way at position B. So there again, there are further play areas incorporated there. Um, next slide, please. Um, this shows um, block B, which is in the middle of the site. And in, in this case, we have um, four, blocks in line between the um, between the center of the center of this uh, site is that surface level route that leads through and it's in, it's landscaped but it also provides car access through to the um, car parking which is in the undercroft between the other two blocks um, it's podium uh, gardens which incorporate play again so every resident has access to play spaces as do other residents um, who live in and around the site Next slide, please. This shows the part of the site that's adjacent to Crayford Rough. And as you can see, there's been the route created all the way along and the, the roadway route terminates in Crayford Rough. Um, um, and as does the uh, River Walk, which uh, finishes at Crayford Rough at position A. So it's all about creating this new access route through to Crayford Rough, which doesn't currently exist, and opening up a piece of land which is currently in private ownership for the benefit of the wider community. And in fact, the, the piece of land is being gifted to the council as part of this development. That's the principle. So out of an overall site area of seven hectares, the intention is four will be given up for community use, um, which is the Crayford Rough element, and it will be handed over to the council and maintained going forward by the council. Next slide, please. Um, this is a street level view. As you arrive into the site, this shows the sort of character of, of areas that would exist between all of the buildings. This particular example is between um, block A, which is to the right hand side, and block B, which is to the left hand side as we're looking at it. And in the distance, you can see the river walkway um, sort of behind the trees. Next slide, please. This again shows uh, a further view of the river walkway. Um, and the, the, the landscaping is a little bit illustrative in this case, but the idea is that the landscaping will wrap up from the river walkway and it'll be very intensely planted along the river walkway, but with spaces to sit out, spaces to you know play, spaces to do exercise. Um, and then there is the residence podium garden, which is sort of um, at the higher level. And then below that podium is that's where we're hiding the car parking. So you, you're never aware of the car parking. It's not dominant. Next slide, please. Uh, again, this is a further view of the um, river walkway, which is leading off to, to the right as we're looking at the shot. And this is the north-south link that leads up to Maxim Road Bridge. So Maxim Road is immediately behind us in this shot. And Sainsbury's would be uh, um, dead ahead in this shot if you walk down that, that landscaped element that you see in front of you. Next slide, please. And again, this is a further view um, at street level, just showing how the spaces would work. All of the um, paths are deliberately designed to be on design lines for people moving within the site and also if you were coming through the site, if you wanted to get to a particular place such as Crayford Rough, these, these paths are being deliberately designed to give that accessibility. Next slide, please. And that's a further view essentially of the same space. Um, the materiality of, of this is, is, is work in progress, but we've put bricks on it just to show that that's the sort of character and the sort of design that would be intended. Next slide, please. 
Uh, Paul, before you start on height and massing, can I invite those um, uh, residents who've joined us now? Um, there should be a speech bubble with a little um, a question mark uh, on your dashboard, what you can see on your computer or your tablet. Um, and we would invite you to ask us questions and we'll address those questions towards the end. But please, um, please do uh, let us know if you have any questions. Some of them may be answered during the course of this evening, but we very much welcome your comments. Uh, Paul, over back to you. Thank you very much. So the height strategy that we've adopted is that the, um, as we're looking at this slide, the, the right hand of the site, uh, which is the east end of the site, is obviously a lot closer to key um, infrastructure in and around Crayford. So it's uh, immediately adjacent to all of the supermarkets. It's a short walk to the railway station. It's a short walk to the buses. So it feels appropriate to increase the, the scale at that end of the site. Um, so there, there is a proposal to introduce some eight-storey buildings, as you can see. The middle part of the site we've um, fixed at six storeys because there are more sort of sensitivities with the houses to the north in that location. So we've deliberately reduced the height in those instances. And then where we've got the open space um, to the west of the site, again, it felt like there was an opportunity to go fractionally higher. So hence, we've got some more eight-storey buildings um, at that end of the site, forming a gateway to um, Crayford Rough. Um, all the, specifically, the the um, east end of the site is very much an easy walk to all of the existing facilities in the centre of Crayford. Next slide, please. Um, and I think this is the aerial view. This hopefully shows that what we've tried to do as far as possible is to introduce gaps between the buildings. So where people are looking towards the site, rather than it being a barrier block that would prevent people looking through we've deliberately introduced all sorts of gaps all the way along so that there is a clear view maintained of sky for all adjacent residents and also critically if you were in Crayford Rough itself we've deliberately split the massing of um, block C which is to the um, right hand end of, the, of, of this slide so that there's a clear gap and you, you don't see it as a single barrier block um, that stops a view out of Crayford Rough, which actually is one of the changes from the consented scheme. The, the consented scheme did present a slightly more kind of barrier block along there that where you wouldn't actually be able to, to see through the middle of the block, but in this case you can. Um, and certainly, uh, you know, all of, I think this, the, the, actually the next slide is good actually because that sort of perfectly aligns. So hopefully it's perfectly visible on that that if you were one of the adjacent residents, you would be looking straight through the gaps between the buildings and it's a relatively thin end of the block um, that's, that, that presents itself to your development. And the landscaping is, is very much, although there's a podium, you know, you'd look straight over the top of the podium due to the level change across the site. Uh, next slide, please. And this is just a, to conclude that this is the, the view from the rough. So this is as you would see, and you can see the gap sort of between the blocks. Uh, the massing is split up into four distinct elements and the, the middle t between the middle two of those elements, that's where the gap would go through. So you'd be able to walk straight through onto Crayford Rough through there. Next slide. Um, so this uh, slide really just shows how well connected this site is. You know, you've got immediate access to three supermarkets, Iceland, Aldi, Sainsbury's. You've got the surgery, the library, the post office, and you've got the retail park. So it's a very sustainable location to live. It also provides direct access to Crayford Rough, albeit at the moment there isn't really access. The site itself blocks the access to Crayford Rough, but we feel that this has an opportunity to offer an awful lot in, in terms of access to Crayford Rough. Um, in terms of parking levels, um, we're proposing 230 parking spaces, and that works out at 0.4 parking spaces across the whole scheme. Um, the site incorporates safer routes for pedestrians, as I've talked about already. So you've got the safe, fully pedestrianised and uh, with cycles route through to Crayford Rough alongside the River Cray. You've also got um, secondary pedestrian and cycle routes alongside all of the roads. So it means it's a very walkable um, development and um, also incorporated within the scheme. We've got 1,100 cycle spaces. And there's an intention to set up a car club that will further reduce requirements on individual car ownership. Um, and obviously the car ownership, uh, the car club will be for the use of other residents in and around. It's not specifically for the residents of this block. 
Um, the scheme also includes drop-off points all the way through the whole development for things um, such as home deliveries and um, you know Ubers and things like that. So there's not like there's going to be people waiting on the street or blocking roadways. It's all incorporated. Same with refuse collections. Um, in terms of the, um, the the demand that this site will bring on transport, it it's been tested and there is no conflict between the, um, the, the various uses because of the different times at which peak, peak traffic is generated. Um, so for instance, for instance, with the residential, the peak traffic flow is early in the mornings um, at rush hour and late in the afternoon. So typical times, eight to nine or five to six, whereas Sainsbury's tends to be more an evening thing or a weekend thing. So it's anticipated there will be no impact on transport infrastructure, um, but it does what do, it does offer is significant um, walk, walking improvements. So for instance, at the moment, Roman Way is relatively narrow, uh, sorry, the pavement along Roman Way is a relatively narrow space. It's being widened out to seven meters and it's being extended all the way down past the petrol, petrol station and all the way along um, Stadium Way where no uh, sort of pavement currently exists. So obviously that enhances the walkability of this site. Um, there's also a zebra crossing proposed, which is going to cross Stadium Way, and there's also um, crossing improvements, critically at Maxim Close and Junction, and uh, also adjacent to the petrol station. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this shows a, a further view of the river walk, so this is how you would move along if you were moving through to get to Crayford Rough. Next slide, please. And this is a further view, and this, this shows the alternative route. So this is the gap between blocks A and B, how we would move down to the roadway if you wanted to go that route, or alternatively the um, the Crayford uh, Walk, or sorry, River Cray Walk, I should say, carries on as you can see going going off to the right in this slide. Next slide, please. Again, this is a further view of the River Walk. This is looking um, south. So this is what you'd see if you were in one of the properties opposite, um, looking through the gap towards the sky in the distance. Um, next slide, please. So in terms of Crayford Rough itself, uh, I think I've said this already, but it's four hectares of currently private land, which will be handed over to the council as part of this development. Um, the land is, uh, currently has a degree of ecological value that's been assessed and so that will be maintained in full. Um, in fact, there will be ecological um, enhancements that will take place in Crayford Rough, so that will uh, you know, further in, enhance biodiversity and we've listed a few examples. So there'll be placement of bird and bat boxes, integrated bird nest boxes and the, any fly tipping that's happened will also be removed. Plus there'll be a management strategy for the for this piece of land, so the scrub will be managed. Um, and the 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 key ec ecology gain, gains is the uh, in, enhancement of the grassland habitat. And the scheme aims to achieve biodiversity net gain as well. Uh, next slide, please. So, oh, I have a bit of background noise. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, this, this scheme will, um, will enhance sustainable modes of transport and uh, just to further confirm, 50% of the site that is being developed will be handed over as open space. And so on that basis, we think it's a highly sustainable, highly appropriate um, development for this site. Next slide, please. So just to summarise, this scheme will deliver 570 new homes. It will deliver affordable housing. The percent, precise percentage is to be agreed, but we will try to make it as high as possible. It delivers the regeneration of a brownfield site, which is currently inappropriate for a town centre location. It creates a riverside walk to a key destination point, which is Crayford Rough. It's a highly sustainable development and it involves the transfer of a significant parcel of land, which is currently in private ownership for the benefit of the, to the council for the benefit of local residents. Thanks, Paul. Um, before we turn to questions, and many thanks for the for the many questions that have come through. I'm very grateful. Do do keep them coming. And as I said, we'll try and get through as many of them this evening. And, and where we can't reply, uh, we'll be sure to put some responses in writing. So um, so February 2020, uh, 
uh, which we're currently in, we're consulting with, with you residents uh, and local businesses. Uh, we'll uh, be meeting later this week with ward councillors and the member of parliament, and we've met with the cabinet member uh, already this, uh, this week. Uh, early summer, uh, we hope to submit the planning application to the London Borough of Bexley uh, and anticipate that uh, the, it will be uh, considered uh, in autumn 2022. Um, subject to planning permission, <coughs> excuse me, uh, work would start um, towards uh, the autumn of 2023 with the scheme being completed in 2027. So let's turn to some questions now. Um, uh, and again, thank you all very much uh, for, for your questions. So uh, let's take it from the top. So I, I guess, can somebody um, set out how this benefit will, uh, how this scheme would benefit existing residents? Um, an important question, given that we are talking with existing residents. Um, who, would like to, who would like to deal with that one? I could go for that one. Yeah, go on, go on if you want to, Paul. Um, okay, I, th I think, well, I, I feel free to add on to the end of this, but I mean, one key um, benefit of this scheme is that at the moment, Crayford Rough, for most of Crayford, is not accessible. The River Cray leading to Crayford Rough is not accessible. You know, there are no routes through the site. So a key benefit is just opening up those routes for the wider public. Another key benefit is the transfer of that piece of land over to um, Bexley Council so it can be maintained uh, for public use as it should be. If anybody wants to add anything that uh, they yeah, may well, have just, in just events add, I would just, say. Just to, add, just to add Paul that the, you know, the scheme also delivers housing, there's a shortage of housing, the area has been allocated as being in need of housing um and affordable housing so the scheme will make a contribution to meeting uh, much needed housing need in bexley and across london and of course that will benefit existing residents um who may wish to downsize or who may wish to get their first home or uh, if it's uh, affordable housing who who be the first step in getting a home of their own um so that's um, all all huge positives um, a number of questions about the parking arrangements, some concerns over uh, what uh, is perceived to be a low number of parking spaces um, uh, at 0 0.4 or around 230 spaces, um, and questions about how that uh, low number can be justified and how that low number can be supported and how there, we wouldn't uh, end up in a situation uh, where uh, uh, residents are, are fighting over uh, parking spaces. Can somebody perhaps just give us a little bit of information about how that figure has been arrived at and how that figure can be justified and also perhaps just explain what um, assessments will be carried out and submitted as part of the planning application uh, that uh, residents can see uh, nearer the time. Yeah, I think if I just just start and maybe um, Chris Vaughan, the highway consultant, can, can, can come in in, in a moment. I think the, the first thing to say is that planning policy relating to car ownership uh, is very much gearing towards pushing down um, car parking. Car ownership is actually decreasing. And um, I mean, if this if if we were to follow the, the mayor, London, London mayor's guidance, we wouldn't have any parking. Um, we are actually uh, seeking to maximize the, the parking opportunities within the development. Uh, the ratio is lower than the previous application simply because the site has a finite footprint and um, we're optimising what can be provided on the site. Having said that, our experience of um, demand on schemes throughout London and we, we as a team, you know, we're all doing multiple schemes across London. Car ownership in new developments is incredibly low uh, and there, there aren't uh, typically any, any issues as a result of that. Uh, it's very much a policy driven uh, directive. Um, in terms of the, the kind of more uh, technical impacts, Chris, I don't know if you want to just come in and, and respond to those. Hi there, yeah. Chris, Chris Vaughan, Patrick Parsons, Transport Consultants. Um, in, in, in terms of the, the, the impact on the, on the town centre and, and, and the roads, we, we're not expecting there to be a significant number of cars given the uh, the lower permission on site and 
we are discussing with with Bexley and TfL at the moment um, the the the, the, the junctures to be modelled. So we'll, we'll assess the impact on on the whole of the town centre um, by adding adding the proposed development flows, and uh, we're not expecting to there to be um, a, a, a a huge impact. Um, the the, the numbers would be similar to to what was already permitted um, on the on the previous scheme. So um, but we're, that's that's that, that that's still ongoing piece of work. And uh, any 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 junctions that do need modifying um, will be as, as part of the scheme as um, to to accommodate the, the traffic as as necessary. Um, I think there was a, a question on. On, on, was, I'm trying to look at the list on, on park and how do we stop people parking off site? Um, we've 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 looked at, as, as Mark said, similar similar developments that, that have been been built and been approved in in the local areas um, with 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 lower parking provisions. Um, and none of those have extensive. Um, of course, any extensive issues with with offsite parking, and and it, it's becoming the norm that um, flatter developments people people do not do not want to or own cars. Um, there was a yeah, I mean, just to come in, just to come in on that. Um, uh, we've got um, you know a, a mix of unit types within the scheme, and the the, the parking space is generally way towards family units, um, but the smaller units typically just do not generate. Um, car parking demand in the way that it might have done 10 or 15 years ago and that, that's that's a factual position and as I say most uh, developers across London um, you know in the in the in the good old days wanted lots of spaces because they needed them to sell homes um, what they found that it, is that people don't want them people there's no demand for them so um, people's habits are, are, are changing significantly so um, we don't believe there will be a significant uh, impact on the street. I wonder if somebody could also explain how the car club works, how that would work. Yeah, I, I can do that. The, so the, the car clubs are, are, are a car that's provided in, 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 in this area by, by Enterprise, and they are they're, they're a, they're a car that's put on, on a site or on, on a road, and uh, Residents of, of the development will hopefully be given, subject to obviously further discussions with, with, the, with, the, with the car companies. They're, they're given um, membership for a number of years, um, so they can they can use a, a car on a 15 minute, an hourly, two hourly basis on a, on a, on a pay as you go um, facility. So it, so it allows people access to a car without actually having to own a car and. Uh, it, 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 it reduces the, the, the need for for many many households to, to own a car to, just for the just for the occasional use of the, the, the uh, can I just, yeah can I just come in just to finish off on the, the traffic stuff um, I, as I read the comments about the the comments about being vague and misleading I think in this forum it's very difficult to present technical data because it will take hours and hours as part of any planning application will obviously be um, uh, required to submit detailed traffic modeling and detailed justification and that that information will be available so um, we're not we're not hiding anything it's just in, in this forum it's very difficult to give you everything um, but certainly when the uh, traffic reports are available as part of the application you'll have uh, have a, a ample chance to review them as will the council's highways officers and transport for london jolly good i think we, we may come back to car parking and uh, and traffic if we, if we get any further questions um uh, can we just confirm i think we've, we've touched on how much of the scheme will be affordable can we just confirm uh, what we're saying about the percentage at this stage um and how um th that will pan out over the course of the um consultation and submission of a planning application yes of course um so uh the previous scheme uh in 2016 had no affordable housing 
Um, that followed a detailed um, assessment of the viability of the scheme. And for, for just for people who might not be aware, um, <clears throat> developments work on a very complicated financial basis, as you might imagine. And a developer uh, essentially needs to hit a minimum profit level to make a scheme viable, without which a scheme wouldn't proceed. They wouldn't get funding from a bank and they just wouldn't do it, it's too much risk. Um, when we re-engaged with the council uh, and, the, and the GLA, um, it was uh, indicated to us that um, affordable housing policy, you know, has moved on quite a lot since the previous application. Uh, demand for social housing, uh, shared ownership housing is significant. Um, and the policy requirement is that we would seek a target of 35% provision. Um, we won't be, uh, in my view, getting that far. Um, we will be uh, undertaking a detailed assessment um, once the scheme is fully fixed, because it's still not fully fixed, because that's why we're consulting with you now. Um, and we will be targeting as much affordable housing as we can, having regard to the target of 35%. Thanks, Mark. Um, uh, let's move on to another question, uh, which was, why the increase in the number of units? From the from oh, the previous consented scheme. That's probably that's probably me again. A um, couple of reasons. Um, uh, firstly, there is a greater imperative now in policy to optimise development um, on sites. Um, the site is actually in an opportunity area where, again, uh, London-wide policy identifies such areas to optimise development, and it's adjacent to the town centre. Uh, again, where higher density housing is particularly encouraged for sustainability principles. Uh, and the site is actually slightly bigger than it was before because the, the land of the petrol filling station um, that Sainsbury's were going to bring forward has now been incorporated into the scheme. So they're, they're, they're the general reasons why uh, there's more units in the scheme. And can you say a little something, maybe it's not, not just you, Mark, about um, the height um, and whether there are other um, eight-storey buildings in Crayford and um, perhaps something about the relationship again, uh, Paul, I think you touched on it, on the relationship between the height of buildings uh, with the existing community, please? Yes, uh, that's right. So um, th there aren't eight-storey buildings. There is a seven-storey building, though. Um, Crayford Library is a seven-storey building, and it's on a slightly higher piece of land than this one. Um, obviously, the centre of Crayford, do, you know, a lot of it is retail parks, but it's it, part of the plan is is that potentially these things will come forward for future development. Um, so. I would accept that there isn't an eight-storey building, but there is a seven-storey building in Crayford at the moment. Um, and we think that sort of ramping up the scale closer to the town centre feels appropriate just because of the access to public transport. There are multiple transport options, including the train station, um, numerous bus routes coming through the centre of Crayford. So, you know, there is a housing demand. We have to put houses somewhere, and this seems like appropriate and um, very much an appropriate site for uh, an increase in scale as we're proposing. Thank you. Um, uh, a lot of, or oh, a couple of questions about social infrastructure in the sense of uh, impact on schools, impact on health services. How does, um, how will the development um, uh, meet any, any, uh, or mitigate any pressures on those um, services? I think that's probably me again, Joanna. Um, so this is quite a complex topic, but um, essentially um, the process is that we have to uh, undertake as part of our application an assessment of impact, because that varies depending on the disposition of uh, or distribution of housing and affordable housing and unit sizes and tenures, as in large, lots more large family housing units has a greater impact. Uh, until that um, that that uh, level of work is finished, it's very difficult to uh, quantify exactly what that impact is. What I will say is that we we will have to obviously do it. Um, the key way of um, mitigating impacts of development um, is through what's called Section 106, which is a contributions or 
work in kind for infrastructure where it relates to development and then more broadly for things like healthcare provision, school provision, etc. Um, then the developers are required to essentially pay a tariff uh, called community infrastructure a levy. Um, in this case, we're currently anticipating that that payment will be in the order of four million pounds. Um, could be a bit more and it could be a bit less depending on the final quantum of development. So there's a significant financial contribution uh, going towards infrastructure um, for the area um, going forward as a result of the development and that should mitigate those impacts. Thank you. A um, couple of um, couple of questions uh, about the rough. One uh, uh, resident is asking whether the gifting of the rough uh, to the council will will um, include a written agreement that this will take place. And also uh, another question about um, the, the the impact of of, of humans of, of more people accessing that um, that piece of land and uh, isn't it to the de detriment of flora and fauna that exists there already so a couple of questions there about the rough okay I'll, I'll deal with the first the first bit which is the uh, written agreement and the answer to that is yes um i touched on section 106 agreements uh, a minute ago technical term apologies um but essentially as part of the planning permission uh, we will be required by virtue of a legal agreement to transfer the, the, the rough to the council. This is indeed the same arrangement that was, um, was, was, was the case in 2016. And there will also be a, a, a pre-handover maintenance and there will also be a, a, a dowry for ongoing maintenance provided to the council. In 2016, that was 200K um, and we will be discussing that with the council going forward. Um, in terms of the ecological impacts, I think I'll um, I'll leave that to um, I think Alison's here to 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 answer that. Hi, I can take that. Yeah. Um, so as um, as has already been mentioned, we have done ecological assessments at the site, um, including the Crayford Rough area, um, and one of the considerations was certainly uh, recreational use. Um, but our ecological impact assessment report was able to conclude that given the already existing access to the rough, there's already quite a lot of paths and access by the public, um, the addition of, of these um, new units is not going to um, create a detrimental impact um, when considering the enhancement measures. The enhancement measures proposed are likely to outweigh any, any detriment there. Thank you. Um, we've had a, 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 a question in asking how many actual people do you envisage living in the full development? Who can take that question? Um, yeah, I can probably pick that one up. Um, so just based on the uh, 10 year sizes, we would anticipate it would be something like 1,300 people. Um, that's obviously an approximate figure, but just that's literally working out how many bed spaces are available. Um, that would be a likely figure and uh, 300 children would, would be included within that figure. OK, um, one issue that um, also um, uh, has come up is uh, the issue of flooding um, and a question from a resident asking, would you say that building this close to a river is wise, given the obvious flood risk? Um, so if you could perhaps run through the the work that you've done to um, uh, consider uh, the implications of any flooding, please. Okay, hey, I'll take that one. It's Alison Cadge. Oh, sorry, Paul. Um, so, yeah, so we've um, been in extensive discussions with the Environment Agency about the flooding issues on the site, and the scheme has very much been designed um, with that flood risk in mind. So, it's had a heavy influence on the form of the scheme. Um, we've um, included lots of open car parking at the ground floor level and um, so in an extreme event if there was a flood on the site and um, the, the flood water would continue to flow through the site as at present and um, most of the residential accommodation has been raised up to the first floor level and above and um, there is 
some ground floor uh, maisonettes, but uh, as Paul said earlier, the ground floor levels will be raised at least 300 millimetres above the design flood level. Um, that flood level is the one in a hundred year plus climate change flood level, so it is a very extreme event that we're designing to, um, and that's fully in accordance with the EA requirements. Um, the scheme's also been designed so that we make sure we're not um, increasing the flood risk off-site. Um, so, as I was saying, we're maintaining the flows through the site if there was that extreme flood event. Um, we're also including extensive sustainable drainage measures. Um, so we're managing the rainfall that falls on the site um, in a sustainable way and holding back the flows so that we're reducing the amount of rainfall that leaves the site. Um, the site at the moment is mostly hard standing, so obviously it generates quite a lot of runoff, but we will be using things like green roofs and permeable paving um, to hold that rainfall on the site and make sure that we're actually improving the situation in terms of rainfall leaving the site um, by reducing those runoff rates. Um, finally, just say we're, we're um, providing at least an eight metre setback from the River Cray in accordance with the EA guidance. And um, that's to make sure that the EA can continue to access that watercourse um, for future maintenance. Um, if there are any issues in the future. Um, so, in summary, yeah, we're, we're, the planning policy requirement is that we ensure that the development will be safe um, and that we're not increasing flood risk elsewhere and the Environment Agency will, you know, will work very closely with us to make sure that those requirements are met. Excellent. Thank you. Um, thank you very much uh, uh, for all your questions. We're very grateful for your questions. Um, what we propose to do is we will uh, consolidate all the questions and answers into a document which will circulate and will also put on the project website so everyone can uh, see what was asked and, and what the responses are. At the end of this exhibition there'll be a feedback form uh, for you to um, fill out. This feedback form will also be available on the project website. Uh, our contact details are on the project website. You're very welcome to get in touch with us separately. Uh, my phone number, my email address are there. I'll be very happy to talk to any resident who wants to get in touch or if you, of course, want any of the materials um, on paper, very happy to do that for or for any of your neighbours. Um, we do have our project website. Please visit it for further information. Um, and as I said, please get in touch if you have any further questions. So thank you very much once again for all your questions. Um, I hope that you found that helpful and um, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. <laughs>